There's a bit of chemistry in what I do, fusing chemicals and heat to create a unique signature style that brings metal to life. As a kid growing up, my father and my brother were into race cars, hot rods, motorcycles. So I was always around metal. I was around the equipment to manipulate it, weld it. They always had tools around for working on metal. They had grinders, welders, and it was just a matter of, I need to go to the scrapyard, get some metal, and uh, make metal art. And just started making a series of pieces just to test you know, different grind patterns and different colors that I could get with spray paint at the time. And then I started selling all that locally and the, and the artwork sold. When I first started making metal art, I was focused on the reflective characteristics of metal. So I spent a lot of time grinding the metal in different ways, uh, creating different textures and different patterns, and that has ultimately become the baseline for the artwork that I create today. One of the first steps for making a piece of my artwork is cutting the material out. So I buy large industrial sheets of aluminum, stainless steel, and copper, and I use different tools to cut the material out. I either shear it or I use a plasma torch to free cut, freeform cut the shape out. Once the shape of the artwork is cut out, I then go into the forming stage. So if it's a sculptural piece of metal, I have a handful of different tools that I use to form that. I do it by hand using a torch, oxyacetylene torch. Um, I also have some tools such as planishing hammer and a power hammer that allow me to manipulate the metals if I can't bend them by hand. After the forming process, that's when the magic happens. I use air-powered and electric grinders to create abstract texture in the metal. And that is the reflective property that creates conceptual movement and is the base for what my artwork is built upon. Sometimes I use fire to bring out texture. I splash a flammable solvent on the surface of the artwork and ignite it. And that creates an organic texture in the chemical patina. The final step for the artwork is to apply color. I do that in a few different ways. I use an airbrush. I use another air-powered gun called a touch-up gun and I'm generally putting down transparent acrylic paint. That's paint that you can see through. It's similar to stained glass. So you can see through the color and see the reflective metal underneath. The best part of my job is there is no plan. I get to come into work. I'm surrounded by endless creativity and I never know what I'm gonna come up with next. <laughs>